Nintendo's just dandy, but given the fact that they didn't go all out with their 2018 E3 presentation like most companies did, many fans were left feeling a bit underwhelmed at the number of games that weren't revealed, especially the people who weren't passionately in love with Smash Bros. The Direct itself wasn't necessarily bad, it's just that it didn't live up to E3 standards, especially compared to what Nintendo revealed in 2017. And also unlike 2017, Nintendo's 2018's mostly been focusing on the immediate future without giving us very many clues about what's to come beyond 2018, which would normally be fine, but given the fact that most of the notable Switch releases we've seen so far this year just been ports on games that were already on the Wii U and other consoles. People are starting to get impatient, and many of those people happen to be shareholders, which resulted in Nintendo stock dropping 7%. But if you ask my calcium deficient ass, I think that 7%'s just a result of people jumping the gun, and those shareholders will eventually come crawling back. Because even though Nintendo's not showing all their cards at the moment, they definitely have an ass load of great things in the pipeline, 100% for sure. My name's Cameron, and I'll tell you why the Nintendo Switch is gonna continue tearing ass around the backyard with more games than even my dad will know what to do with. <laughs> So how do I know there's big Nintendo Switch games on the way? Well, aside from my anonymous Nintendo source, who I'll only identify as Phil Spencer, there's simply no way it's even possible Nintendo doesn't have big games on the way, given the fact that they flat out gave up on the Wii U over a year before it was officially discontinued, and because the N-Boys don't have to split development between a handheld and a console anymore. I know it might not seem like there's big games on the way since the Switch's 2018 lineup mostly consists of Wii U ports, which is frustrating even for somebody like me who actually likes Wii U ports. But given the fact that Wii U ports always sell well on the Switch as a side that as a business, Nintendo's doing the right thing, even if it is frustrating for both a minority of people who've already bought these games before, and for those who've never actually played them before but refuse to based on the principle of them being old. But just because Nintendo's not showing us everything they've got when we tell them to, doesn't mean that they've just been sitting around the past few years with their fingers up their asses. I mean, they may have been doing that as well. I know damn well Reggie has. But they're just pacing the release schedule with one notable game every month, rather than overwhelming everybody with more games than they can handle, even if many of these notable releases have been ports of older games or Nintendo Labo. Although I think it would have been nicer to have a better balance with original content, there's still no way that with all the time that's passed since they gave up on the Wii U, and with all the time these ports bought for Nintendo, and again, given the fact that the Switch is Nintendo's only focus aside from a Luigi's Mansion port, that an ass load of big Switch games are imminent. And when I say big games are imminent for the Nintendo Switch, I don't mean to imply that I think Nintendo's gonna surprise us with another big release for 2018, because I think Smash Bros and Pokemon Let's Go are still more than enough to carry the Switch through the holidays, because whether you're looking forward to those games or not, they're still gonna sell out the ass and increase the Switch's sales in the process. And if you think about it, any other big first-party releases would just be overkill, which is what I believe the main reason for pushing Fire Emblem and Yoshi to 2019 is. I mean, why release another big game for 2018 only for it to get lost in the shuffle with Pokemon and Smash, and then not have a big game to put out later on? Don't get me wrong, I wish we had at least one more surprise game for the last fourth of the year, since I'm not that excited for Pokemon Let's Go. And while I do love Smash, I'm not particularly a competitive player, so I do need a little more bang for my buck. But if Nintendo's goal is to sell Switches at a steady pace, then I don't think a wild card game for September like Luigi's Mansion 3 or even Metroid Prime 4 could really do all that much to move Switches off store shelves any faster than Smash and Let's Go already will. So I kinda sorta understand why Nintendo would hold back at E3, although I still don't think it could've hurt to at least give us some updates on Metroid Prime 4 since we already knew about it. But again, I think I understand Nintendo's thought process. It makes sense to give 2019 games their own spotlight sometime after E3, rather than to share buzz with other big announcements like Fallout 69, Resident Evil 2, and Madden 92 Remastered. I don't think Nintendo foresaw that the stocks would take a hit, but even though that's exactly what happened, it doesn't matter one tiny little bit in the long run since they're just gonna go back up, seeing how it'd be harder for Nintendo to fuck things up than it would be for me to earn my father's trust back after I forgot to pick him up from karate lessons last week. And besides, it's not like Nintendo came out at E3 and just said, these are the only games we're gonna be working on and have nothing for 2019. And if you still think Nintendo's in the least bit of trouble for not revealing their cards on everybody else's terms, then just remember that besides the fact that the Switch and even the Wii U ports are still performing well, the NES Classics return is going to continue to sell out the ass. And even if a Game Boy or 64 <coughs> Mini isn't in the works, there's nothing stopping Nintendo from putting one out if business actually starts to decline, aside from the fact that the controllers are probably going to be bigger than the actual console for the 64 Classic Edition. And don't forget, the 3DS is still selling pretty well for a console on death row that's more neglected than my dumbass dad who's still waiting for me to pick him up at Sensei Terry's Dojo. 
Asia. But even though Nintendo's got a lot going for themselves besides the Switch, I'm not even the least bit worried about the hybrid console's future. And besides, Reggie Nissan straight up gave us a disclaimer that the E3 Direct was only going to focus on 2018's games. So everybody, including myself, really just got their hopes up. But my point is that we're still getting one notable release every month, and that means Nintendo seems to have learned from the Wii's mistakes, which is really all we could ever ask for. Even when Nintendo was fully supporting the Wii U, it oftentimes went months without a notable release. But that shouldn't be a problem anymore with a handheld not stealing any more development time from the home console. I mean, imagine if every notable 3DS game that came out while the Wii U was alive was instead tailored for the home console. I'd wager that the Wii U would have done a hell of a lot better had that been the case, even though good games were the least of that thing's problems. But Nintendo fully focusing their development efforts on one device is exactly what's happening to the Switch, which is really the main reason why I think there has to be big things up their sleeves. And I know I'm probably like one of five people who actually believes Nintendo when they say they didn't want to show Metroid Prime 4 off at E3 because they didn't want to show off a game that's not coming out anytime soon. Because what other reason could there be to hold it back? It made sense to announce it last year when the Switch's future wasn't as certain, but if all they had then was a logo, then I wouldn't imagine a game on the Metroid Prime series could be finished that quickly. So why waste time on it now if it'd be better to just show it off more later on? In the middle of 2017, it made a lot of sense to reveal as much about the Switch as possible, but that doesn't make as much sense to do now since the sales are pretty much on autopilot at this point. Why announce big games for the distant future that would unnecessarily take attention away from 2018's lineup? I don't think we'll have to wait till 2019 to learn more about some of the big games to come, but the holiday seasons where Nintendo wants to create buzz more than any other time of the year. I mean, Nintendo's already got two holiday games that are generating a lot of buzz. So to create the maximum amount of Switch hype possible for the key selling season, announcing more games for the future closer to the holidays would make potential Switch owners much more likely to get one. Most people are already going to want one or both games, and if a massively anticipated game like Bible Adventures 2 was announced around September or October for 2019, it'd make them that much more keen on wanting to invest in a Switch. If a 2019 release for Bible Adventures 2 was announced at E3, though, then the excitement for the game would have eventually worn off by the holidays. So it's either that, or Nintendo's just waiting to reveal more about the Switch's future when everybody's all tuckered out from Pokemon and Smash. At least those scenarios are probably the original plan anyway. However, after Nintendo had their carpets bare-ass spray farted on in response to their E3 Direct, they just might throw everyone a bone sooner than later to tell us a little bit more about non-Smash Bros. related games as a form of damage control, and to reassure everyone that they've got big things brewing that nobody knows about yet, just like they did with the announcement of the Gen 8 Pokemon game the day after everyone was upset about 2017's Pokemon Direct that only revealed a Wii U port for the Switch with a new main series entry for the 3DS. I mean, Reginald pretty much told us more info was coming soon, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're getting something ready right now. But in either of those scenarios, and for all the reasons I've mentioned, I think it's clear that there's no way in HE Triple Hockey Sticks that there isn't some big stuff in store for the Switch's future. I've said in the past that the Switch's 2018 was gonna top its 2017, and even though that turned out not to be the case, I still think I'm right in believing that Nintendo's got a lot of awesome stuff in store for the Switch's future future and aren't just winging it. I was just wrong in thinking that they'd unleash it all over our chests and faces in 2018. In 2017, Nintendo really had a lot to prove after the Wii U peed in everybody's horse milk, which is why they announced games that they seemingly haven't even started working on yet. But now that the Switch is trucking along just fine, pacing's key and it'd be foolish to put too much out at once. If you think about it, it's kind of like starting a campfire. 2017 needed a lot to get the fire going, but in 2018, when the fire's burning good, it just doesn't make sense for Nintendo to pour all their grease into the fire at once and then not have anything left for later on. And I Ideally, there's gonna be enough grease for the fire to last forever, so based on the fact that we've been getting one notable Switch game per month, I fully believe that Nintendo knows what it's doing with the Switch, and that the hybrid console's future is looking just as bright as ever, despite one disappointing Direct. If they're gonna continue their one notable game per month strategy, though, I just hope they put Wii U ports on the back burner for a while, and instead start harvesting on some of the original games they've been working on. A few more Wii U ports in the distant future would be fine if they start running low on original content, but hopefully there's enough third-party content to help with the load by that point, so that Nintendo won't have to rely so heavily on the Wii U's ghost. And by the time Nintendo's on a steady release schedule of original games, I do expect third parties to be more heavily involved with original content, which I'm sure is a part of Nintendo's strategy as well. What do you think, though? Does Nintendo have big things in store for the Switch that nobody knows about yet? Or do you think they've just been sniffing their farts the entire time they've been porting all these Wii U games over? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, I'll pin whatever I find most entertaining or intriguing. Don't forget to like and share this video if you want to help this channel grow. Click the subscribe button if you're an ultra mecha godzilla like creature. And if you want to support us on Patreon for as low as a dollar a month, then I just might be able to get enough gas money to pick my dad up from karate lessons. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.